Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We're really fortunate to have Dr. John Grabowski with us today. He's written a new book published by Tan Publishing, Unraveling Gender, The Battle Over Sexual Difference. And it's a very critical battle that's going on. It's really a, a battle for the, the soul of, of all of mankind. We're so stoked to have uh, John here with us. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your host, Bear Wozniak. You know, I... I, Cindy and I, we go out and we speak at a lot of places. And what's really interesting to me is how often, I mean, always, the women tend to kind of encircle us and corner us at some point, And then just say, you need to teach men how to be men again. We really need men. And uh, nothing makes it more clear that there's a difference between men and women than what we're seeing in the world today. This attack on Ukraine, you know, I'm a Ukrainian. Um, and... Uh, you're seeing the men escorting these brave women with their children to the border. And these, these women are going on by themselves and taking care of their children. And the men going back to do what? To go back and do battle. That's kind of the loudest argument that there's a difference between men and women that I've heard in 10 years. And these men are back there valiantly fighting. Do you know what, it mean? You know what happens when a man is truly a man? And I don't talk about masculinity. I just talk about manliness. When a man is really a man, it makes so much room for a woman to be a woman. That's really, that's really our, our place. You know, when, when, I, when I tandem surf with Cindy, I don't know if you guys know what that is, but that's when you're, we, we, we paddle into a wave together. She's in front of me. And then she gets up at the same time I do. She leans a bit against my chest. We surf cheek to cheek. And then I lift her. I lift her. And... Uh, Really, I'm the captain of that ship. I choose the wave because I'm going to have to surf that wave. I direct the surfboard, but she flows with me. When we do a hard cutback, she helps me regain my balance so I can retrim the board. But when I lift her, I'm using what I am as a man, my skill, my agility, my prowess, my courage, because I protect her. My shins look like a roller coaster ride, an amusement park, and my back looks like I've had multiple back surgeries because I've some if we're wiping out, I'll hold her close to me and I'll be the one drug across the reef. My back takes the reef. But you know what's so cool? So I'm I'm doing I feel like I'm the ultimate of who I am as a man at that moment in so many ways. And you know what I'm doing? I'm lifting her. And if someone drops in on me, I protect her. I let them hit my shins. I don't throw her or, or, or let things wipe out. And you know what? She displays her power and her beauty and her uniquely and her unique grace. And so men, being men, allow a wide, 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 beautiful, great world for women to be women. And nothing, I think, shows that more than what's happening right now in the Ukraine. And that's why I'm really stoked to have as our guest, uh, Dr. John Grabowski. He's with... Um, See if I can say it right. The, uh, he's the he's a professor of moral theology and ethics at the Catholic University of America, America, and he's a Steubenville graduate, which I really dig on uh, because I'm still trying to get my master's degree in theology online there. And uh, I got to ask you: are, are, are you're, you're obviously are you you're Eastern European? You're by by your nationality. Sure. Um, the, my name is Polish, but actually I'm more Lithuanian than Polish. My grandfather was Krabowskas. I but see. when he came to the United States, he changed to the Polish form of the name because he knew both languages. So we, there prob were more we probably both like the same food. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, pierogi. Uh, yeah, yeah. We we call it put a habit. I mean, I just had one for breakfast. <laughs> My wife knows <laughs> to make him and cook him as part of part of our breakfast. But yeah, it's just so good to have you here. And I think what you're you're what we're discussing today is very uh, is, is 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 so vital. And tell me this, why did you title the book Unraveling Gender, The Battle Over Sexual Difference? So I, two reasons. One, um, because if you, as you were just describing, 
um, and then you offered an alternative. If you look at our culture, our understanding of the sexual difference, what it means to be men and women is unraveling before our eyes. Um, it's under attack. Um, people are confused. Um, and some people are actively trying to sow confusion among others. And you see it reflected in the culture, you see it reflected in our courts, the way we've conceptualized marriage, the way we understand what it means to be a man or a woman. Um, so if someone identifies as the opposite sex, we say that's, that's good enough and they deserve all the rights and protections. So um, that's one sense. The second sense is to unravel something can also mean to understand it. And ultimately what scripture tells us, what the church tells us is that sexual difference is a gift, that it's part of God's plan for us. So we can understand that gift more fully. We can unravel it by looking to scripture, by looking to what the church has taught us to. So it's, it's an unraveling in both of those senses. But you know, you know, John, a couple of things come to my mind. One is you quote uh, Tertullian. I'm, I'm not. I'm going to paraphrase it. That flesh is the f the flesh is one of the keys to salvation. Understanding. I don't know exactly his words, but isn't it important? Yeah, and, and John, and, and how important the human flesh is. I mean, Jesus became human. God loves the human flesh, and but I, and I remember um, 10, 12 years ago when I came back to the Catholic faith. The, the, one of the first things I read was about 135 lectures by John Paul II on, on the theology of the body. And it blew me away that you could go into Genesis and make 135, basically. So, t t take us down that road, the anthropology of, of, of uh, the theology of the body. Um, sure. what, what does it mean to be human? What did God intend? Oh, but before we say that, are, are people in the LGBTQ community our enemies? Uh, absolutely not. Um, this is, as I try to say in the book, um, and as we all need to keep reminding ourselves, this is a spiritual battle, right? We're not fighting against human beings. We're fighting against confusion. We're fighting against error in understanding who we are and understanding the gift of what it means to be a human person, what it means to be male and female. And we're fighting against the spiritual roots, the demonic roots of that confusion that are getting more and more um, forceful in our culture. But no, we don't, we're not fighting against any people. Even the most strident proponents of what the church calls gender ideology, those aren't our enemy. Those are people who are loved by God, who God wants to invite into the fullness of his plan for them. So no, this is, this is a battle against confusion. It's a battle against error. It's a battle against evil in ourselves and in the world around us. So this is, this is part of, this is, our, our struggle is the struggle of the Christian life here. This our, is just the latest heresy to come down the block. And our response is that they're made in the image of God, and we and we treat all with with dignity. Uh, Absolutely, Abs no no human being is less the image of God than any other. No human being is less loved by God than any other. So we need to be absolutely clear on that. But one of the things I like about uh, in studying this in the Catechism of the Catholic Church is. You really don't see the Catholic Church referring to things such as homosexuality. They don't really doesn't talk about homosexuality. It talks about same-sex attraction, and then it makes a statement that we don't uh, make some that that um, we don't make a, a distinguishment. We don't classify you by being this type of sexual tendency or that. We classify you as one thing: imagio dei. You're made in the image of God. So let's get that straight before we start. That. We, we, but I will say one thing, John. I worked um, in a place for about six months. I was kind of interim uh, uh, controller for them as I was starting my CPA practice. And this was a, a national hotline. They received thousands of calls every day. What, what shocked me was most of the people, uh, and it was for, for, peop for children who were being sexually abused. Primarily it was um, ped pederasty, men on, man on, man on children and, and men on boys. In that room, mo most of the people in that room were themselves identifying as homosexual. And almost every one of them, this is anecdotal, talked about a time when they had been sexually abused themselves. And so I, I, you, you have a statistics in your book about how, how many, how, what percentage of the LGBTQ community has experienced sexual violence. 
it, it's it's shockingly high. Um, so in many cases, as you say, these are people with deep wounds, right? That they that they carry with them. But back to your your original point, I, I couldn't agree more. We're not identified by who or what we are attracted to. We we are our identity is that we're sons and daughters of a, a father who loves us. That's that's the bedrock, right? So to to say. I, to to identify a person by their attraction, it's just it's it's wrongheaded. It sells it sells us short. It sells our full full reality and identity short. So the church doesn't speak of, uh, you know, homosexual you, persons as that, a rule. It speaks of same sex attracted persons or opposite sex. Attracted. Well, let, we got to we got to take a take a break here. But you know, let's do a new T shirt and we'll call it "I identify as a Magio Dei." Huh? Pretty good. Yeah. All right, you, you, I get to have the, I get to, I'll license it to you. You can sell it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Dan Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up. Shoot. A shoot is something folks today think of as plain old fun. You know, it's that tube you slide down with acceleration into a pool of warm water. But to a wagon master on the Oregon Trail, they meant nothing but toil, sweat, and swearing or praying dependent upon one's disposition. The near last chute on the Oregon Trail is called the Laurel Hill Chute, where immigrants like my great-grandpa, Dan, wrestled with ropes, pulleys, and sheer strength to lower his wagon and oxen down a near vertical rocky slope to the next section of the trail. Keep in mind, there were five chutes on the Laurel Grade, but the Laurel Hill shoot was the worst of the bunch. I'm sure the only thing that kept great grandpa and grandma going was the fact they had already come some 2,000 miles and only 50 more to go before reaching Oregon City, Oregon, the end of the trail. Their eyes were resolutely fixed on the final destination. The book of Hebrews was written to folks who were gravely struggling with their faith during a difficult time in their spiritual journey. The writer encouraged them with these words. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Grab a rope and pull, my friends. Don't lose heart. Like Jesus, there's joy set before you, too. This is Daniel LeBoon Markham with CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community and our three-year school of manliness. Video, audio, and written content, as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We are so stoked to have... Uh, uh, Dr. John Grabowski with us. He is. Uh, he's written a book, Unraveling Gender: The Battle Over Sexual Difference. We laid the groundwork before we left uh, our last segment that uh, the the real identity when people say I identify as this, I identify as that, is that our real identity is that we're made in the image of God. Having laid that groundwork, can you help us understand the anthropology the, uh, of John Paul II the, uh, of the human body? Um, I'll do my best, but uh, <laughs> a lot, there's a lot to say and not a lot of time to say it, Bear. But um, so a lot of people have said, and I totally agree with this, that 
John Paul II's understanding of the human person is a response to the challenges that the Industrial Revolution, the Sexual Revolution, and our ongoing technology revolution have given us. So it's a response to the questions of the time. It reminds us who we are, wh where, we, where we come from, that we are sons and daughters of a beloved father. And so he does this deep reflection on scripture, on starting in Genesis, but then carrying through the pages of the New Testament, where, and he gives us, uh, as you said, an anthropology, right? We are, we are created to be in communion with God, but also created to be in communion with one another. In fact, Adam in Genesis 2 only discovers who he is when he meets woman. For the first time, he says, this one is called woman because out of man, she's been taken. This is Isha because out of Ish, she's been, he recognizes, John Paul calls that the spousal meaning of the body. He recognizes what it means to be a man in her feminine body. She recognizes what it means to be a woman in his male body, right? So it, sexual difference is meant to draw us into communion with each other, with God. Um, and that, that communion is fully realized when we give ourselves to each other in marriage or when a man or woman gives themselves to God in the church and religious life. But in both of those cases, it's the body that expresses the gift. The body communicates the gift of the man to the woman, of the man to the church, of the woman to the church, of the woman to the man, right? The body expresses the person, John Paul tells us over and over again. And that capacity to give ourselves in love, the spousal meaning of the body damaged by sin, but it's offered healing and restoration by Christ. Christ enables us to realize that plan that God has for us, for love, for marriage, for sexuality. Um, from the beginning, um, Christ reveals us to ourselves and reveals what we're made for. We're made for so him, we're made for a, each other. Absolutely. Man and woman, yeah. And we're made for God. That's the elevator summary of the theology of the body. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, you know it's so interesting you say that my mother used to say that Christianity is very simple too you can share with someone the gospel by the time you get on the elevator and the time you get off but I don't mm -hmm. think you can do that with theology of the body <laughs> it's harder <laughs> it's a lot harder. more challenging well you know I, 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 back in the 60s uh, I went I graduated in high school in the 70s I remember it was very unusual for a man and a woman to live together without being married now, in a lot of Christian churches, it's it's kind of basically accepted, and and I remember um, I, I remember the, the the sexual revolution, you know, of, of the '60s and '70s, uh, free love. Uh, but John Paul II, one of the first things he wrote was love and responsibility. Without responsibility, with, you know, it, it, it when you when you give someone give yourself to someone that way, and he talked about love being self donation. And willing the true good for the other, as Aquinas would say, but to to uh, when men, I'm going to say it like it is. When I was in high school, uh, women didn't. I'm going to say it frankly. They didn't put out. You know, it was like a, a social contract when I was young. Um, but once that was broken because of the pill, then men could just have sex and and didn't have to take any responsibility. And so what seemed to happen is. Uh, because of that, men became boys. I think Aquinas said one of the things that makes a makes a, a man effeminate is that his seeking of pleasure. And so, so it made men into boys. I'm just going to go have fun with this girl. I don't have to. I don't have to man up, get a good job, work to take care of the family. And I really think that that moment of 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 the uh, sexual revolution was the beginning of the defeat of manliness. It was the breaking apart of manliness. I'm not saying it very well. No, you're saying it, I think you're spot on there. Um, I think what in previous times and cultures helped men to mature was commitment. You give yourself in marriage, you give yourself in religious life, you give yourself in military service. And without that, com and that's what turns boys into men, right? Taking responsibility, being there to care for, provide for, protect your wife, your children. Without that, um, yeah, men have become infantilized. 
Men don't, you know, they live in never, never land. They don't have to grow. They're just lost boys. They can, they don't have to take responsibility for their sexual decisions. Um, as Mary Eberstadt says in one of her books, you know, it's, it's Peter Pan and the weight of smut. Men are infantilized because they don't have to commit to get sexual access to women. Um, and in fact, now with the porn epidemic, they don't even have to engage with a flesh and blood woman. They can just consume pornography instead. Um, so they can become completely infantilized as a so, result. So this weapon that the enemy is wielding is is, is this weapon uh, against men. And I, I know it's against women, too, of course. But this weapon against manliness is is sexual is this is this free sex and and pornography it de it decimates the m virtue and and, and and it it not just keeps them a boy it 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 fractures the boy it it decimates virtue and it destroys marriage mm, um there yeah. was a study that I found that this is the having a compulsive uh, addiction to pornography is the leading cause of marriage of divorce in almost 60% of divorce cases in the United States. When I was a boy, um, I saw a Playboy once, you know, mm -hmm. stuffed behind an uncle's couch. Now, men are, the, the, the young boys even are on the attack, men and women, of pornography. It's an all out war. And uh, I, and people just think of it as just part of a, just kind of part of life to for, for them to engage in, in uh, pornography. Focus on the Family estimates that the average age of first exposure to pornography in the United States is seven to eight years old. Well, you see it in the commercials now. If you want, if you talk about sexual perversion, uh, you see men kissing each other, and and it's just like no big deal. You walk down the, you walk down the hallway of the Delta Terminal, and there's pictures of two men embracing each other. And I think these poor children, they're not even given a chance. What I want to get to another subject, but before we go away, how can we? even consider having our women go to our children go to public school now they're, they're, they're so much of this is just being per perverted and, and distorted for them yeah no I, in the I schools. Agree. unless you really know the school unless you really know the curriculum the faculty i would not i mean we have five kids we did a mixture of catholic school homeschool and public school with them my wife and i talk about this all the time they're all adults now if if we we're doing it today public school would not be on the table. It's not public school, it's an indoctrination. Uh, it, in it is. 60, 70, 80%. Um, and it, yeah, in the name of making kids more accepting and inclusive of others, it really is just indoctrination and it's destabilizing kids' sense of what marriage is, what family is, what what who they are as a boy or a girl. I, I saw uh, a picture of uh, Pete Buttigieg's so-called husband at having a, 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 a camp for boys who were identifying as girls, they were probably 12 years old. And they were, and they were, they were all making something out of a, a model of something. I mean, that, 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 I, I, didn't even, I, I didn't even know when I was 12. I maybe it was 13 or 14 when I, when I learned how babies are made. That's how far we've come. Sure, or how far we've fallen. Right. Um, I mean, yeah. It's how can a child that age make a decision they don't even know what they well the the data shows us that gender discordant kids eighty to eighty five percent of them the gender discordance will resolve by the time they reach adulthood even with no intervention no psychological or medical intervention and yet this is what activists are saying well no these kids need to be put on horm uh, puberty blockers and then in adolescence cross hormone therapy and then when they reach 18 or even younger in some cases they need to have the transitioning sur surgical procedures oh my and that's God. crazy in light of the it breaks my heart hey men go run for the school board men teach catechism classes teach confirmation um, so many men say, well, we've just been re relegated to the background. No, you chose to be relegated to the background. If, if you're upset about this and you're angry about this, it's good. You should be. But sitting, but just being angry doesn't do it. And, and I would add one thing, Bear. Men, teach your families. Scripture uses the term father and teacher interchangeably, right? Mm. So men have a particular role in teaching the faith to their children. So Oops. start there and then take it to the school board. 
We're talking, yes, of course. The breach in the, the breach in the wall goes right through your living room. We're talking with Dr. John Grabowski. His book, Unraveling Gender, The Battle Over Sexual Difference. We'll be right back. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. You know, one of my favorite things to do in the islands is to outrig a canoe. I have a one-man super light carbon fiber canoe that I can paddle for miles or I can take out and surf beautiful waves. But what people really like to do here is paddle together maybe eight people in a canoe and all paddle together and drop in on a wave. And I remember about a half a year ago, Cindy and I were here in Waikiki Beach and none of the canoe captains were going out. It was just way too big. You could hardly get outside the reef. But my friend Pat said, I'll take you out, Bear, if you want to go. So Cindy sat number one in the canoe, and I got in the back, and a few Aussies got in the middle, and we paddled out. And through some kind of miracle, we made it out through the reef. We paddled out an eighth of a mile, a quarter of a mile. We had to go a full half mile out, out to the place that they call First Point and beyond. And we waited, and we waited for the big cleanup set to come. And we didn't have to wait too long. Here it came, a 20-foot-plus wave. Paddle, ho -o -o lay with all your might, everyone in the canoe. Paddle, paddle, paddle with all our might. And we missed the wave. Now we're in a treacherous place. We're in the impact zone. The bigger wave is coming. Ho lei! Paddle hard, paddle hard, paddle hard. And we dropped in. Cindy was number one in the canoe. The water spraying past her. She looked down the line. The wave is bigger than the 24 foot canoe. We're shooting down the line, going to the right. We turn left across the reef. I have to climb out on the outrigger to keep it from flipping over. And we straightened out again and then went straight. But how do we do that? Ho o o lei. We all paddled together hard. This is why being a part of the church is so important. Jump into the bark of Peter, the boat of Peter. The French call outriggers piros. And paddle hard. Pad to, paddle together with one a purpose according to pursuing the magisterium and the teachings of the church. This is Bear Wasna coming to you from Waikiki Beach. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite you men to go to our deepadventure.com website and join the School of Manliness. We have a man cave there. We've had that for several years where, you know, we share with each other. It's like a, a non-Facebook community, but it's like Facebook. And we share with each other, you know, our, our hold my beer moments, but we also share with each other our challenges, what, where we need prayer, and, our, and, and we inspire each other. We encourage each other. Every couple of weeks we get together for a big Zoom video call where we, we go through a certain curriculum of the School of Manliness. The other part of the man cave is our School of Manliness. It's, it's fashioned after the cave of Obadiah, where, I mean, the cave of Adullam, where, where David, hiding from Saul, uh, misfits, men who uh, were running from the law, or like I like to say, running from their mother-in-law maybe too, uh, they owed money, they were failing, they joined, joined him at the cave. And that's why I say our man cave is just filled with a bunch of misfits. I say, don't, don't worry worry about joining us we're all bozos on the same bus but we but in the cave of Adullam those men formed each other and God formed them and the name uh, the school of manliness is based on the school of the prophets of Obadiah the 100 prophets who formed each other so come go to deepadventure.com join bear school of manliness at the three three-year curriculum and just as dr. Grabowski was saying 
this curriculum is so cool. We got videos. We've got audio we've got written content we've got uh compass assessments you can take but men guess what you join with us men in the man cave but then your sons can participate and actually even your daughters uh, there's a there's a one-year curriculum for them you can lead them through the three-year school of manliness and we all go through each module of the school of manliness at the same time we do it together so uh so that we don't get uh you don't have to be going it alone. So, men, come join the School of Manliness. And then I love it when the men start teaching their sons. And we have that all for you at deepadventure.com. Pretty cool, huh, huh John? Absolutely. Yeah. And this is the kind of formation that we're, we're missing in the church and our men need. What so is they the, can step up. What is the difference between nature and person? Hmm. Um, let, oh, boy. How much time do we have? Um, Elevator. Elevator. No, I'm just right. kidding. I'm just kidding. No, this is the two floor <laughs> elevator distinction. Nature answers the question what, person answers the question who. So we are both a what, that is, we are human, and we are a who, that is, we're a person. So as, as humans, as the what, there's only one human nature. Men are not more human than women. Women are not more human than men, contrary to certain kind of extreme voices out there right? They're, we're both equally fully human. We're all sinners saved by Christ, but we're also who's. We're also persons. And there, sexual difference is an intrinsic. It's, it's, it goes to the deepest fabric of who we are, right? Which is why an, another reason why the idea that you can technologically change one sex into another, one, it's just biologically false because you're not have- changing genetics they still have a women still have it, this what do we what do men have an x and a y yeah men are xy women xx and the, chrom- you know, the chromosomes you can't change that and someone who quote unquote transitions has to stay on cross-sex hormones their entire life because their body is fighting against this cosmetic rewrite their nature that, is fighting their they exactly their nature is an embodied human being but so but beyond the biology I mean, this is, this is part of our identity as God's beloved children, to be a son, to be a daughter. And we can't, we can't say, no, God, you got it wrong. I, I'm, I, 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 you, I'm really that. I'm just the spirit trapped in the wrong body. My sex assigned at birth, they got it wrong. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a completely false ideology um, and really... I think at root, it's Gnosticism. Oh. It's, I need to be saved from my body. Yeah, the most ancient of, of heresies. Um, and the most persistent. St. Irenaeus wrote a whole, a whole uh, uh, one of the early church fathers fighting that. And, you know, it, it, it keeps showing up again like it's brand new. Talk to us about that. That's, that's a, that is a real jab, punch, hook, uppercut right there. Um, yeah, I mean, you're right. It's, some people call it the hydra of heresies because we see it in the early church, um, fighting again for the, the faith over against Gnostic distortions, which say, no, the body is evil. Marriage is bad. Christ didn't really assume a human body. Those are all Gnostic teachings, Gnostic ideas, because they see human beings as little spirits trapped in dark, evil matter. And then it reappears in the Middle Ages, the Cathars, the Albigensians. And then it reappears at the end of the 20th century in New Age spirituality um, and all this other stuff. And it's reappearing again in our own day in what the church has called gender ideology. You know what? I'm yeah. just stru- Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. You know what just strikes me? Satan hates us because he doesn't have a body. Yeah. He's kind of I mean, jealous, I- right? I mean, he hates the flesh. Going back to Tertullian's quote. Yeah, the flesh is the hinge of salvation. And I mean, not only do we have bodies and Satan doesn't, but the Son of God assumed our nature, body and soul. So the Son of God is hypostatically joined to a glorified human body for all eternity. All eternity. So, that's my, isn't that something? Yeah, and that's that's where the grace of the sacraments flow to us from, from the glorified human, human body of Christ. So... The flesh is absolutely the hinge of our salvation. So, of course, this heresy wants to keep coming back and keep trying to destroy the flesh and our understanding of its goodness in God's plan. 
Yeah, and 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 and, and what we're seeing is this this attack really um, going back to pornography. It, it's an attack against women or the other or the individuals that are involved in that. I mean, we, when we were doing a long ride home, we rode our motorcycles through Houston, Texas, and we stopped by and we prayed with the Catholic Charismatic Center there in front of brothels. And I remember one woman opened the door and looked out and was like so happy because we were praying the rosary. And then the enforcer shows up and his a couple of guys show up in trucks. And, uh, you know, we're standing there wa walking with the cross and she was pulled back in. If you want to know what pornography is, that's what it is. So you're not, but not, but, you know, it's like, it is like what Socrates said. No harm can come to a virtuous man. If someone tries to murder me, really harm comes to their uh, virtue and not to me because I, I can't be moved. When you, when you, uh, indulge in pornography not not only are you harming her but you are harming yourself you're killing your own soul Absolutely. you have to win that battle how do men Absolutely. win that battle um prayer fasting um praying for purity of heart praying for the gift of of the virtue of chastity which is both something we cooperate with and grow in but it's also a gift of grace john paul ii at one point said only a chaste man or a chaste woman is capable of true love. So if we want to be capable of true love, right, whether we are married, whether we're single, whether we're um, in consecrated life, then we have to be chaste. If we don't have that virtue, then we can only use, we can't love. We can only use. That's all we're doing. We're subjectifying. We're, we're object, what is it? Subject objectifying yeah, someone. We're, we're and, turning others into objects and for John, our own use. And John Paul II said they should be subjects of our love. You know, that's what we live here in Waikiki, and we go out and surf, and believe me, there's a lot. I love the beautiful, the, the human body is so beautiful. But I'm walking along with my wife, Cindy, and I'll say, let's walk, let's cross the street, or let's stop and watch the sunset. And, and she, finally, after a while, she, she was asking me, and I go, because I have a covenant with my eyes. And there's someone walking in front of me that may be being more promiscuous than, than my eyes can handle, you know. So, and it was really something she said, I've never heard a man say that before. And I said, you know, we're newly married. We've been married about five. Our anniversary is coming up. But I said, I, like David, I've made a covenant with my eyes. And so I just stop and I look another direction, you know. And my wife yeah. is so beautiful. I'm chased. I, I mean, she's very easy to be in love with her, you know. I mean, that's that's we need more men to do that. I, I know of one young man who was at church. Um, this was a, a young adult man. It was on a hot summer day and there was a young woman in front of him who was dressed probably not even appropriate to be outdoors on a hot summer day, but certainly not for in a church. And when it came time for people to go forward for communion, this young man leaned forward and put his hand on her shoulder and said, Miss. I think you should know that because of you, I'm not going to be able to receive communion, but I don't think you should either. I, I don't think that's true. I'm going to argue against that for a moment. Go for it. I'll call BS on that. I, no, I think it's true that she that she uh, made it hard, difficult for him, but it wasn't because of her. Right. We still he should have got up and moved and gone someplace else. Let's take some kuleana, let's take some responsibility. But you are right that uh, we need to make a covenant with our eyes. We need to. Sure. And, and 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 take responsibility and uh when 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 uh if he would have gotten up and moved i would have had respect for him i mean maybe he didn't maybe that's not the best way to respond but i think it I was think real many, many, many women do appreciate it when a man will speak up and say hey you don't have to dress like this in order to be beautiful there you go there you go right on the money well there's a difference between beauty and being pretty you know, I always tell my wife she's beautiful because I see what's inside of her. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with Dr. John Grabowski. I went the whole segment without reintroducing you. His book, Unraveling Gender, The Battle Over Sexual Difference. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. We invite our mama bears to join our non-Facebook community created just for you. 
to share the journey with each other, and to take the self-guided one-year course on the Virtues Plus, you have free access to all of the Long Ride Home TV show, all of the Bear Wozniak video version of our radio show, plus the Catechism in a Year videos, all at deepadventure.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. My co-adventure guide today is Dr. John Grabowski, which I kind of think, man, John, we probably need to get you back. This has been just really gnarly. It is about. It is really the most gnarly conversation you can have these days is, is about, you know, this whole woke thing has canceled men and women. Yes. The whole idea yes. of it is to cancel. And, and if you speak out in behalf of sexual difference, you get... I mean, a lot of people, you know, have really been subjected just speaking up and saying, hey, we shouldn't have men who identify as women in women's locker rooms or in women's sports or in public spaces where women are getting undressed. That gets many people. J.K. Rowling, the Harry Potter author, she got labeled a turf, a trans exclusionary radical feminist. Hey, she, I learned a new word today. She spoke up on behalf of women being in women's spaces just for women's safety. Um, because she, at some point in her life, experienced sexual sexual assault. Right. So, you know, it's it's. I mean, I've gotten a, a just a little taste of what we've come to call cancel culture. I'll um, bet I bet you have. I can't sell my book on Amazon because Amazon won't sell it. And the That's day that it, the day that it came out, um, my publisher Tan tried to buy paid advertising on Facebook, and Facebook canceled the ad because because of the subject matter of the book and we have one of our our sites on on facebook the same thing that's why we have our non-facebook community the man cave but see now um, okay so you sh you should have known better than and not written this book um except that god told me to bear praise god for people that for people that will st stand up you know the, the, this whole cancel culture to me is a very uh, 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 effeminate response to two things men like Men are more out in front of each other. If we're going to have a problem, we're going to deal with it. We're not going to be passive aggressive. We're going to confront each other, maybe duke it out. But I just remember in high school, girls used to cancel each other. They'd gossip each other. You're not going to be part of our crowd. This whole cancel culture to me is effeminate. Mm. Not feminine, effeminate. So you no, I, I, mean, I, I hear you, although I think it's been used enough politically over the centuries that, I mean, Men have men have employed this too before our time, but um, I, your point's well taken. This is not a typically male way to deal with conflict. Yes, you're right. I mean, you look, you go back to the French Revolution if you want to talk about being canceled. But I mean, sure. the way it is today, the, the, the or Marxist political correctness. Talk to us about Marxism and 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 the 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 the, the, the philosophical underpinnings of this. Sure. I mean, like all forms of Gnosticism is always syncretistic. It picks up flavors from what, whatever's in the air and water around it. And in this case, this 21st century Gnosticism has absorbed a good, as Pope Benedict XVI told us, a good dose of existentialism because it denies there's a human nature. It denies there's a God. A good dose of postmodern thought because it denies there's any absolute truth. But also it's it's drunk at the wells of Marx, right? Because uh, sexual difference is a tool of oppression that needs to be overcome and we overcome it by overcoming the family, right? So this is key to liberation on Marxist terms. So gender ideology has absorbed bits and pieces of all of these kind of strands of modern, largely atheistic philosophy. And that's and, the... That's the school system today. The school system wants to be mom and dad. Sure. The state wants to be mom and dad. That, that's the essence of Marxism. And so you just relegate parents. What do you think about, you know, we have this group of women we call the mama bears. There's nothing more. I, I used to have a cabin in Montana, right on the Canadian border by Glacier Park. 
I mean, like two miles from Canada and a mile from the park. You didn't want to mess with mama bears. You know, the grizzly mama bears? I had a grizzly quarter right in front of my cabin. I didn't know when I bought it. But these mama bears, um, you know, the school wants to, the, the, the teachers union is the biggest union in the country, you know? It's very powerful. But man, have, have they been exposed during this whole COVID thing for what they are? Pe parents have gotten to see what their, pe what their kids are being indoctrinated with and they are pushing back hard and they should. Um, absolutely. Um, so again, we need to, we need to empower parents um, and remind parents like the church tells us, even in the rite of baptism, when we bring one of our kids to the church to be baptized, the church prays, you are the first teachers of your child in the faith. May you be the best of teachers. That is our primary responsibility as parents. So even if we send our kids to a Catholic school, even if we send them to the parish uh, religious education program, we still have the primary responsibility to form them in the faith. You know the thing is too is that you, you see um, the, the 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 parents standing up and speaking are so erudite. They're so well spoken, you know. And so if you want to have um, a conversation with someone, not polemics, but just just talking about who you who you are, how you v believe, dude, get this book, Unraveling Gender, by Dr. John Grabowski, a, the battle over sexual difference, so that you can parse down when people accuse you of, of being. Um, uh, prejudiced that you're just saying this this go ahead John go oh, for it <laughs> absolutely this is not about being transphobic or homophobic I'm if, if you're genuinely Catholic if you're genuinely Christian you're not afraid of other people who identify in one of these ways um, it has nothing to do with fear it has to do everything to do with no you've been co-opted by an ideology that distorts your identity and your dignity and you deserve better than that well, and you know now there's, there's there's I think in California there's laws I don't know where else where you cannot help someone who's having a, a gender issue you can't you can't counsel with them they, they you, there you know? there are laws in California and New York against misgendering people but also some states are moving to pass laws against for example even talking about we just had a couple of days ago we had a detransitioning day right now celebrating people who transition and realize this was a terrible mistake. And who is we? Who is we that did this? This was all over social media. Was it um, a Catholic thing or just? No, I think it's bigger. I think it's wider than that. It's awesome. People, this is one of the most silenced groups in our culture. People who right. have transitioned and then said, "No, this is this didn't address what 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 I thought it was going to do. It hasn't addressed my pain." So they try to transition back, and even though their fertility gets destroyed uh -huh. with, with full surgical transitioning. They still, um, so Ryan Anderson has a wonderful chapter in his book, When Harry Became Sally, just mm -hmm. letting detransitioners tell their stories. But right. some don't, don't silence them. Some states are passing laws that it, you cannot talk to people. You cannot give people even information about detransitioning because it's seen as um, offensive, transphobic, whatever. So we've got people's attention. What should we do about this now? We've got a couple more minutes. Um, as you just said, Bear, start with edu for, for parents and and engage Catholics. Educate yourself. Don't don't t take it. Get a deeper understanding. Take a dive into the understand what gender ideology is, what it's doing in our culture to the medical pr profession, what it's doing in sports, what it's doing in our courts. And then understand what the church offers us as an alternative. Um, dive into the theology of the body, dive into the teaching of scripture, because we have a life-giving alternative that is so much better. And it's scientifically better as well as theologically better. So let's start sharing that good news. Humana Vitae, uh, John, John Paul II's uh, theology of the body, um, and then right up there with them, <laughs> Dr. John Grabowski's <laughs> on Rappling. a little high, Bear. But... Hey, hey, you know what, though? The fact is, we people think I'm really smart, but I just read books like yours and, and JP2 and, and St. John Paul II, I should say, St. Pope John Paul II, and, um, and Humana Vita. You know, there's so, though, if you would get your hands on some of Christopher West's book, I think who does a good job with that. It's one of the books my wife and I read when we first you know, were considering marriage. 
and then uh, and and the the whole Humanae Vitae, the fifty year celebration was what a few years ago. Um, I think it would go a long ways. And then find one way that you can make an impact. Find one way that you can make an impact. And I think it. Go ahead, John. I mean, I think bigger picture here, right? The biggest way we can make an impact is to be part of what the church has called us to in the new evangelization. But understanding who we are and who we're called to be in terms of the gift of sexual difference is one of the tools we need to be effective in the new evangelization. You know, you, so you John, we John need to get Archbishop John the, Sh Chaput digs on you, right? Um, Archbishop Chaput is a, is a very dear Archbishop friend. Archbishop Chaput, sorry. Uh, well, I, I was with him. At the, at, we were at the Napa Institute a few years ago, and someone raised the hand and asked him, "What is the best evangelization program that you think we can we can adopt?" And he just said, "Get married, have a big family, raise them up in the Lord." So, yeah, I think what you're saying is it's got to start right in your home. We're talking with Dr. John Grabowski and his book Unraveling Gender: The Battle Over Sexual Difference. Uh, where can people find you? Um, so they can find me on the Catholic University of America website, or I have my own website with my wife, our ministry, marriageforlife.net. Praise so God. So marriage, the number four, life.net. And you know what? you got to go to Tan Books or to your local Catholic bookstore to get this book because it's been banned from Amazon. Can't get it on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a mark. That's a badge of courage. We got to run, everybody. Until uh, next time, we'll, this is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. May may the breath of the Holy Spirit, Aloha, you, Aloha. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at DeepAdventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.